<laughs> Welcome to Loot Shooter Weekly, your weekly source for information about loot shooters. Uh, I am the gamer tag. I am gamer tag Burt Reynolds, the gamer tag Burt Reynolds. That the, sounds so arrogant. The, it, it arrogant. Really is. The I, one and only Burt me. Reynolds, right there. Forgive me. I am gamer tag Burt Reynolds, and with me, as always, is my lovely co-host Negan Killjoy, <laughs> the golden voice of gaming. Yes, the golden voice of gaming, indeed. <laughs> Having a good time over here. How's Bert doing tonight? I'm doing well, Negan. How about yourself? Doing well. Doing well. Looking forward, as I was last week, looking forward to the beer tonight. So, you know. And it's good sign. Thursday nights, so it can't be all bad. Right? No, it's true. That's right. Thursday bad. nights lead to a good song. As we've mentioned before many times, it's Fridays, and a bad Friday beats a, a good Monday no matter what, because you always got the weekend to look forward to. This is true. So. We talk about loot shooters every week, and tonight we're back in Borderlands 3. There's a lot of news for Borderlands 3 that we'll cover in a minute. Mm, we also yes, we also covered The Division and, well, Division 2. And we cover Destiny 2, our three loot shooters that we cover. Um, and I bring up Destiny 2 tonight because I did title our stream... Root Mind Eraser, and Root Mind is a reference to, to Destiny. Uh, the Root Mind is the boss at the end of one of the Mercury missions. Of course, oh, the Root Mind right. is not that's in this game. Nope. But nope. <laughs> we don't. We're gonna we don't get Mercury yet. We don't have any place called Mercury just yet. We don't have Mercury here. We are gonna cover an Amara build tonight, um, which is a version of Karma. Uh, Z Karma's Carmageddon build, and I've been playing with Z Karma's Carmageddon build. So shout out to Z Karma; he did a great job putting this awesome build together that uses a little bit of a broken interaction between indiscriminate and the root and AOE damage. And I've just been taking what he had done and really thinking about you know how I could really optimize it and could I apply it to other elements besides just radiation so in his build he's using a, a red suit shield to defend against the radiation he might be using a driver com i'm not i'm going to use my phaserker com and so i was trying to figure out how could i push the damage a little higher still say still say stay survivable still stay alive and also apply other elements, you know, instead of just doing radiation, could I do it to cryo, could I do it to corrosive? So that's what we're going to talk about a little later tonight. But we're going to talk a little bit about Borderlands in general, because new event this week and a lot of news. But before we go there, oh, thank God. before we go to the build, before we go to the... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm killing Negan over here. <laughs> He's literally going to die. <laughs> I'm just going to fall over dead any second now. Dying of thirst over there. Before we go any of those places, we're going to talk about what we're drinking tonight. And then we'll talk about where, you know, stay the game. And then we'll talk about the build. So is it my week your, or your week, Negan? No, you know what, man? I'm going to. It's actually your, it's your week. It's your week to go first. I can wait. It's, it's good. Let's keep this in rhythm. So, yeah, you can go first. I will I don't make want, whatever I don't, I'm having taste even better, just making me wait. I don't, even I don't want you to stroke out over there because it sounds like you're going <laughs> to. Yeah. Well, it's, I'm not going to make any promises, but I, I don't think I am just yet. So, I'm going to. So, the, the longer I wait, the better it's going to taste. So, that's there's that. So, go ahead. What do you got? I, I'm drinking my favorite beverage tonight, uh, Key Lime La Croix. Okay. Um, that's my non-alcoholic beverage, and uh, it's always good. And for beer tonight, I am covering... So a couple weeks ago, I covered Oberon from Bell's, which is their Weed Ale. It's a right. Bell's Mich Michigan brewery. I think I gave it an 8 of 10 or a 9 of 10. I, I love Oberon. Um, they apparently, and I found this today, have a mango Oberon. Ooh, I've never mango. seen it before. So I'm going to try a fruity version of that. Now, normally I would put a lemon in my Oberon, but I'm not going to put a lemon in this. And I'm going to be a savage drink it right out of the bottle. So oh, okay. cheers to you, well, Negan. What well, are you drinking? We won't, judge, we won't judge you harshly. So mm -hmm. tonight... 
I am drinking a beer from Clown Shoes Brewery, which I don't know where they're from. Unfortunately, I meant to look at that beforehand. But it is a Clementine White Ale. So if you recall, last week I did a Blood Orange drink that was really good last week. It was really, really well done. And in fact, we ended up buying another six pack because it didn't last very long. So I got a <laughs> six pack of that. So this week I'm staying with the orange theme for at least a second week and going with a Clementine. It's a Clementine white ale. And that's what it is. Very basic. Very, you know, like I said, just very basic Clementine infused with some other flavors. We'll see how it tastes. And I am not going to be a savage. I'm not going to drink it out of a can. I have an ice cold glass that it's getting poured into. Mm-hmm. I will enjoy it because, you know, I'm, I'm that kind of snob. We both picked fruited white ales. We did. There's some, did. some irony in that. Now, I will say, I don't know. Last week, you were suffering through a heat wave out there. Um, mm-hmm. We're suffering through a heat wave here right now. It's uh, 90, it was 95 with like 72% humidity here today. So yeah, ripping, ripping hot. So hence the, hence the fruit infused white ale. Sure. But like you said last week to me, you have air conditioning. I do. And I'm in a basement. I'm wearing a coat. <laughs> if you didn't notice, I'm wearing, <laughs> I, wasn't I'm wearing I was curious. I'm wearing a jacket, a man. You know, I have rain outs, uh, disease. Mm-hmm. And so I'm always cold. And I'm in a what basement, you, so it's freezing yeah. here. I'm freezing you'd down You'd find, find 90, 95 degree weather with 72% humidity mm. uncomfortable. I sat out there for an hour tonight and enjoyed the warmth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, was nice. felt, it felt good on my hands um, and my Very toes. Cool. So, But I wouldn't want to sleep in that weather. I can tell you mm-hmm. that. Mm-mm. No, no that's that not would fun. be gross. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'm so glad I got this. Mm. My, I'm not going to stroke out now. I'm feeling good. Feeling better. <laughs> good. I was going to say, are you going to be all right? You're going to be okay. Uh, all right. Well, why don't you tell us what the event is today? Because um, it's kind of a fun one. You know, I think it's kind of, it's going to be a fun event. Yes. We're going to go have some fun running uh, one of the takedowns in a little while with it on, just because it'll be fun and funny. And so the the event going on right now is Mayhem Made Mild, is what it's called which is only easy modifiers in Mayhem now. So you don't get any of the, the lava pools or anything like that. When you go into the Mayhem menus and you look at the modifiers, you can only get the easy ones. They're all easy, like big heads and more than okay boomer or grenade damages by 25%. And, you know, easy slayer and speed demon, you know, when you run you're faster in the movement speed after a kill and all that good stuff. So they're all little easy... Easy cheesy ones, which is kind of cool. It's very cool. And I think, you know, for those of us like you and I who have pretty min-max builds, it's just going to make the game probably boringly easy. But for somebody who's, you know, leveling up, leveling up tunes through the mayhem levels and stuff, it, you know, this is a great week for them to go farming. Um, So if you're only like, you know, part-time player of this game and you're not really fully at end game mayhem levels, this is a fun week to play this game. And a good time to go get Mayhem 10 loot. Because yes, absolutely. Because it's easy be easier for it. Easy button, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, easy button. Yeah, some of the ones, like I said, like the big head one makes getting crits much easier and, and dropping people that way. So if you have builds based on crits, it's a good way to run those. Um, mm-hmm. It may be deceptively easy. I mean, I'd, I'd hate to have a, a not a great build and just tear through Mayhem 10 and then next week when it's back to normal, it's like, oh, <laughs> now I'm getting destroyed. <laughs> So keep that in mind. If anybody's running it, keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, we'll go back to hard, and those modifiers are not always easy. Right. Back to, so that's what's going on this week. As hard and very hard. So you know, very hard. That. Yes. And then we got news and a trailer. We did. We for did. DLC four, Krieg's something fluster cluck, whatever. It's Krieg, this our lovable psycho. Yes, Psycho um, Krieg and the Fantastic Fuster Cluck. There it is. Called. Where we're going into Krieg's mind. And it looks really fun. It looks really fun. And it brings back Maya, who died during the regular story. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of fun aspects to it. Moment um, of silence. That, Moment of silence for yeah, Maya. Mo- I know. But we get to spend a lot of time with her right. during this. Because, so, if I'm, if I'm correct, Krieg is from... Borderlands 2, 
he was a DLC yes. Vault Hunter or something yes. like that. So it's just a, yes. another yes. nostalgia hit for all you Borderland fans that have been mm-hmm. there throughout, like you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very much, very much so. And looking forward to it. And then, yeah, but the other news that came out of it is, is we are getting a level cap increase. So for us gear hoarders like myself, we're going to have to empty that vault and eight total, well, seven... Oh, I, I I shouldn't laugh. I really shouldn't. I shouldn't chuckle. I I, I do feel bad for you having to empty that many uh that many mules and and that. Yeah, how many mules do you have, Negan? You have a couple mules. You have four have, tunes and a couple mules. I have I have four tunes, and one of them is also uh, sidelines as my mule. My Amara goes back and forth as my mule. So ah. I don't have any other mules. You, dude, we talked about it before. I'm not into the farming as much as you are, so. This is true. I wouldn't, this is you true. know, it would take me forever to, I mean, I don't really think I have, I don't think my vault's even full. I'm curious, what is my vault? Well, my vault is I at... spend a lot of time hooking people up with gear. I mean, that's, you do. that's, that's right. on the low key, that's like my sideline job, right? I hook people up with really good gear. Yes. And people so... include me, you, you've hooked me up with some gear too. So I'm at almost 300 in my vault. So at some point I might approach 400 close and I might have to actually fire up a mule, but. Not anymore, not with the level cap, like you were talking about. So, but we're getting five points, going up to 65, which is going to allow you to double capstone and get a little over halfway down the tree, I think, on most builds. And that's going to make a lot of changes possible, especially for builds like Moe's, where you probably will be able to get, you know, say in a deathless build, you know, red tree build, deathless one HP build, you would be able to get all the way down the blue, all the way down close to the bottom of the red, because the red capstone's kind of lame, but get, you know, down towards the bottom of the red enough to pick up desperate measures and fill that out, and then go all the way down the green tree or very close to it. So, going to make for some very, very strong builds. Flax going to get very strong bonus out of that zane will get i mean all all of the vault hunters are going to benefit a lot so what kind of stuff but, will it bring to to Mo's, for example what what would uh, is it going to increase her splash damage stuff or what's it going to kind of off the top of your head what will what will it improve for her no i i think you know the splash damage builds will be able to add a little bit more sustainability than they okay. have today because they'll be able to add more red tree. I mean, typically splash damage build, this could be all the way down the blue, all the way down the green, and a couple points in the red, so you'll be able to add more into the red, which will allow you to increase your shield further and some other stuff like that. That would be the benefits of the top of the red tree. But where it's really going to come into play is with the builds that are primarily red tree and blue tree, because they'll get a lot more of the green tree, meaning they will get a lot more ammo sustainment. Making them a lot stronger. Yeah, Moe's needs more ammo. Well, but you saw last week on that Deathless... I wasn't running Deathless, I was running... But that one HP build I was running last week, right? I was running out of ammo. It does happen. Red. If you go red tree, blue tree, and a little into green, you will run out of ammo. Especially on on non-splash guns, if you want to run anything other than a full-on splash gun, and if you're not throwing grenades every 20 or every two seconds. I mean, it, it, it'll it be able to make that play style very different. It'll allow a lot more damage out of the Deathless or 1 HP build while sustaining okay. ammo. All right. Um, gotcha. Flak is going to get, you know, I think most Flak builds right now run one capstone and a fair way down in two other skill trees, but most people aren't able to do... If you want the best of flak right now, you can't double capstone. This will allow you to double capstone and still get all of what you're getting today. Zane... I'm not exactly... I haven't really looked. I play Zane the least, and so I don't know there, but I can say with Amara... We'll just take a look at her skill tree right here, right? I'm I'm already double capstones. I'm blue and red capstones, which most people with Amara are going to run that. But I will get, you know all the way down into some mindfulness or I'll get the benefit of some helping hands. I could get a bunch more damage from uh, Samsara. I mean, it's there be a Amara is going to get a good kick damage kick out of it. For example, 
So you think it's a fair trade to having to refarm for all the weapons and all the shields and artifacts and comms and all that stuff? You think it's a good trade for the additional five points? Because it's the last time it, they did it was it was a minor bump. It didn't seem to make a and huge that's, difference. Which... That's why I'm glad it's a big bump this time. Because the other thing they've said is they have no nothing planned thus far. In the foreseeable you know, they have future not... is what they've said, yes. Right. Right. <laughs> And they, because they've not released any details on year two, but in the foreseeable future, they do not plan any additional level caps. And if they follow the pattern set by Borderlands 2, it will be a very long time before they would have another one. Okay. So, and then if they do, it would just be a final one, you know, to kind of close it all out and stuff like that. Get everybody to three capstones and see what everybody can do with the massive builds. Correct. Yeah. So my guess right. is this will hold us for a very long time. And so I guess, I mean, while it stinks, I don't mind it that much. The one thing missing from the news, though, that was speculated was additional skill trees, and there's been no talk. Although they're in the game files and, you know, they've been data mined, they said nothing about right. any additional skill trees. And so everybody was expecting to hear, and all the Vault Hunters are getting a fourth skill tree. <laughs> And that did not get announced. So who knows, you know, if that's coming, when that's coming. Again, we don't know what year two looks like. Year two was a great year in Borderlands 2. We've been surveying players to find out if players would want a full other year of DLC, like year one. We know they're going to have all the seasonal events again. So you'll have things like, you know, Joey Ultraviolet and the Heck Hole and all that stuff again. But, you know... Raid bosses, bunkers and badasses. There's a whole bunch of possible things that could come in year two. Um, but it could be more like the Headhunter DLCs and stuff like that. Little, small, you know, every couple weeks, small packages. Or it could be big. Don't know. Right. Yeah, they've, they've been very very close to the best with what they're doing in year two. But my, uh, I have no doubt year two will be awesome. And it'll be fun. And we probably won't be facing more level caps. So it'll be... It'll be farm on time and uh, get our get our builds all back to where they are today and and be happy and play around with those extra points and enjoy it. Yep. And they've also been pretty set in stone with the fact that they're not going to have any more playable vault hunters either. They've been pretty pretty adamant about that that they're not going to introduce any more vault hunters for this for Borderlands Three. They they said they're pretty much stuck or they're they're okay with having the four. Well, and that's been I, very un, unpopular. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah, a, not, that's been, been, been a very well. contentious point. Yeah, not not received well. But yes, they have said they're not bringing any other Vault Hunters. And you know what? Honestly, you and I talked about this, what, a couple days ago? If they did, it would be disappointing only because it would mean we'd have to run the story missions again. Because several different parts of your build are unlocked in the main story. So yes. if they did bring another Vault Hunter, I feel like they would have to bring some sort of skip step that unlocked all that and allowed you to go right into at least DLC 1. Yeah, jump you straight ahead so you're pretty much at 60 or whatever like that? Or, do you, or are you saying, yeah. just, I'm just curious what you're thinking. Or just so unlocks all the stuff, you know, unlocks the artifacts, comms, all that, and allows you to be at a higher level so you don't have to run the story because I want to run that story again right now. No, no, definitely not. Mm. All right. So speaking of Vault Hunters and stuff, what build... Yeah, let's keep this together? train rolling. Yes, let's keep it rolling. Let's get back on to, you know, the build that you got for us. Last few weeks, you've been doing Moe's builds for us, which has been kind of fun, putting those together. And yep. you kind of introduced this one a little bit, but let's talk build now. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's talk build. Yeah. So again, Z Karma, you can look him up on, on Twitch and YouTube. He has a build called Carmageddon Moe's. And... What it's basically looking at is the root. The root, if you've never had shot the root, it's sniper rifle, Malawan. It shoots, rounds out, and they look like a swarm of bees. And they're ricocheting. And when they ricochet, they do splash damage. And there's a skill in the skill tree uh, on the red tree called indiscriminate uh, that ups the ricochet damage um, and so Amara's bullets that damage enemies have a chance to ricochet and deal 
Decrease damage to other nearby enemies. Ricochet chance and damage are increased if the target is currently affected by phase grass or stillness of mind. Great. Okay. So ricochet chance 30%, ricochet damage minus 50, action skill ricochet chance 60, and blah, 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 blah. There it is. <laughs> so. Blah, blah, blah. Just, just skip it down over there. I got you. Just <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's that's the skill. It's using that skill. Well, somehow that skill with the root is like dipping. It's either dipping or double dipping or triple dipping. I don't know. Into action skill damage and or mayhem ten scaling damage. And because okay. it is splash damage, it deals area of effect damage. Now, normally everybody on Anamaro is going to run a pearl, but I'm not running a pearl. I am running, and they, and they at, run a pearl because Amar is one of the few vault hunters that can keep it proc pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. She keeps yeah. it proc pretty good. Now, in his build, he's running a elemental projector, victory rush, and he's letting the radiation damage hit him and dot him, and then reprojecting it through the elemental projector. I found okay. I was not always dotting myself. I wasn't always getting the dot. It was inconsistent, so I wasn't always getting the damage boost from the elemental projector. In theory, if you could always dot yourself, and again, he might have been running a driver com, which would allow himself to dot himself, because that's what the driver does. It damages you, and the faster you move, you do more gun damage, but the downside is when you use your action skill, you dot yourself with damage over time uh, damage. Uh, Okay. I was getting dotted, but only every once in a while. And so what he was doing to combat being dotted by radiation was wearing a red suit shield, which basically is kind of like the transformer, but for radiation, except for that it doesn't convert the damage into your shield. You're just immune to any radiation damage you take. So I have one. I mean, I ran the build exactly as he had it. You can see here I have... My elemental projector victory rush with AOE damage. I have my red suit. Um, but what I discovered about this was, one, I wasn't dotting myself all the time. And two, old gods, then this is why I say, when I took this build and I started tweaking with it, one, I tweaked the skill tree a little bit, but two... You used to, when you would run Driver, during all the way up through whatever it was when we went from Mayhem 4 to Mayhem 10, that patch, you had to run a Transformer, basically, with Driver, because when you dotted yourself, you would kill yourself almost instantly, right? And then the Old God came out. Then Which when is not the old fun. God... Killing no, yourself, it's not. not fun. It's not fun. When the Old God came out, it reduces the incoming elemental damage if it's matched to the element that would be dotting you by enough that it really doesn't kill you. It gives you time to react to it, and it's not the type of thing where you're always insta-downing yourself with it. So I thought, well, what if instead of the victory rush, or yeah, the elemental projector victory rush, since I'm not consistently getting the dot and applying it and being able to project it, what if I switched out that red suit for a radiation old god, which is going to give me a grand total of about 40% resistance to radiation. And I switch out for an atom bomb auto idle, which will give me a little more survivability with the health on kill, but also give me the aura damage, the aura burst damage, and the aura burst radius from the radiation. Of course, on any artifact you have to have aoe damage and that was the thing that was missing when i was running a pearl and running the root right the root would do damage ton of damage with amara but it wasn't ridiculous so you're going to see in here basically what i'm running and i'll show you my skill tree here for a second i'm going all the way down the blue tree picking up do harm you know to get the rush stacks for action skill damage i'm getting the critical hit damage here from transcend I'm getting the status effect chance coming out of Violent Tapestry. I'm getting my action skill backed right away from Restless. Ascendant is just increasing all those values. I'm getting laid bare where I'm <clears throat> allowing enemies to take additional damage 
once they've been damaged by my action skill, that benefits the group. Wrath is a bonus gun damage. Awakening to give the rush attacks increased effectiveness. The Remnant Orb, which of course, even with one out of three into that, is enough to kill just about anything in the game if it gets hit by the Remnant Orb. And then I have Avatar so that I can use my action skill twice. I've got Anima for the DOT damage, the dot damage, Steady Hands, Tempest for bonus elemental damage and shock damage, one into Wildfire to help it spread from enemy to enemy, Gun damage is increased after I grasp. Indiscriminate's maxed out. I need as much ricochet as I can get out of this thing, and this is what's going to make this build really, really, really scream. Deep well to get a little bit more mag. Are we looking forward to more PowerPoint gaming, or...? No, 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 no. No. And I'll I'll explain all that in a second. Okay. Um, Catharsis. Here, I just did this to get down the tree. Sustainment gives me some life steal. There's, you can see the amount of life steal I'm getting between that auto idol and this. I'm I'm trying to get a bunch of life steal back, keep myself alive. Again, bonus elemental damage here from forceful expression. Up to my health a little bit with root to rise. Personal space gives me bonus damage based on the distance. Now we are going to play back, so I'm not going to get a lot out of this. But you get, I think, the minimum you get out of this is like eight or nine percent even if you're like a mile away. So it's still worth it. And then arms deal, which is going to give me a little bit more splash damage, but it's also going to give me splash damage reduction, which again is also going to be the key to that sustainment and not running that red suit. You may remember. That was blue and green. What did you show the orange, orange tree as well? I showed them all. I showed all the trees. Just double check. Just making sure. I did. I did. I did. Um, and I know I went through them quick, but, you know, they're very standard. This gun is the Recursion. That used to cause PowerPoint gaming. They did just buff this, and it is viable again on only Amara, <laughs> basically. Yes, yes, they added. They went from five to seven projectiles. Seven, yep, yep. We're not, we're, I do use that in this build, but that's not what I'm going to show you. Okay. You may That's remember funny. with that, we used to struggle with PowerPoint gaming. Mind eraser, so you must be using something else other than the... We're using the root. <laughs> We're using the root. Um, yeah, you may remember PowerPoint gaming. You would come into a room, you'd start firing the recursion. It would take a few, maybe five, six shots to build up, and then all of a sudden it would go into PowerPoint mode, and then all of a sudden everything would fall dead. This is going to be exactly the same experience, except for no PowerPoint. Oh, okay. I'm going to... I, and I'm not going to take five or six shots. I'm going to take one or two shots, and everything's going to fall dead. All right. Everything nice. is going to fall dead. So we're going to go to our favorite test spot down here. And we're going to do that. We're going to make everything some go mobbing. goodbye. Yeah. And again, I'm just going to gonna grab some popcorn back here, you know, sip yeah, on my you beer. just hang out. And go hang, hang out. out back here. While you shoot things. And then... So you said you're going to play back a little bit more. Now, isn't Amara, is she usually a playback? She's more of an up close because of the grasp and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. All right. But I'm going to run in here, right? And I'm going to, I'm going to get every, everybody out that I can because I want as many enemies out as possible. And I'm going to grasp that nog, and I'm going to start shooting. Damn! What the hell? Part of my language. And you'll oh, notice yeah. I, I like jump back and out of the way, right? Because um, if those root if those root blasts come back at me, they will drop me. Um, it's it is. I mean, it can be very unpleasant if you get hit by it. But if you play smart, that doesn't happen. God, you're lighting up the sky back here. Maybe not have to worry about PowerPoint, but. Seizures or something on the lava. Good job, dude. That is crazy. And well, what's creating and what's creating the massive explosions? Which which the part of the AOE? Is the AOE on the artifact is causing that. Oh, okay. So those are hitting each other <laughs> and causing area of effect damage. The splash damage is causing AOE. Dang, okay. 
It's almost wasting a bullet just to shoot one guy. I know, right? So that's that. Beautiful, that is, right? That's Hilarious. insane fast. Yes. That's that's yes. insane fast with mobbing right there. Yeah. It's and it works in bossing. <laughs> you just if you're in a small confined space, you have to jump around a lot to stay out of the way of any of those root blasts coming back. So now we're gonna actually um we're gonna fast travel back to the start of this. And I'm gonna switch the build up a little bit. So okay. this was my this was my reason for the other reason I did not want to get sold into the rad suit avenue. Again, not critiquing at all what Z Karma did, because I think his build's amazing and it's very safe. But it's limited to radiation. So the beautiful thing here is now I'm gonna switch to a cryo old god. Okay, right? cryo old god, right. And, and I'm going to switch to a icebreaker auto idle with cryo damage, area effect damage, and mag size. And oh, I'm going to put my root auto. I'm going to put my root onto cryo instead of radiation. <laughs> now we're going to turn right. everybody into ice cubes. Everybody. Catch up. Instead of my popcorn, let me catch up. There we go. Instead of big, splody clouds of radiation killing everyone, now we're going to have big, splody clouds of ice, and everything's going to turn into ice cubes. Stuff's going to freeze. Like, this makes Zane's Sentinel Cryo look like a joke. This whole room I can freeze. Whoa, hey, now that's big. Those are big words right there, making it look like a joke. Actually, we're, well, ice cold, man. It's ice cold. I guess we're going to have to run through. I guess it's that going back to the start there did not reset this area. So we'll go to the next area, and that's fine. Hoping that would reset it. Yeah. Best laid plans, man. Best laid plans. Best laid plans. Yeah, so here we're going to go in, and we're going we're gonna to hit this. Um, okay. All right. Thanks for waiting. Thanks for waiting. I was, again, had to put down my popcorn and pick up my controller. So here we go. So we want to really get as many enemies in here as we possibly can at once. So you kind of, you want to go in, you know, try and try and trigger the area. Okay. Now All stuff right. has to stay alive for it to freeze. I do should call that out. I mean, it doesn't, if it all dies before. Before you freeze ooh, them, yeah. It and I got, my, I got myself on that one. You're going to have to pick me up. I did get myself on that one. You didn't jump, so you didn't jump back far, fast enough? or what? Yeah, I, I wanted to see it happen. <laughs> okay. I was I was curious to see how effective how many of them turned into ice ice cubes and was standing out in the open So you just kind of watch when things start to pop like boom 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 okay they're going to start exploding and then I just back up a little bit Right okay Yeah cuz you're dropping groups of 4 or 5 relatively quickly and, and relatively easily as well. I mean, there's, they're not lasting very long from what I can tell over here. It's watching you. You're no, dropping these groups and, pretty fast. And the radiation is definitely more effective than the cryo. I mean, because cryo's more of a, a status effect than radiation. Obviously, radiation's all about damage. Cryo's all about, you know, slowing stuff down. Oh, you spawn killed the guy. He didn't even get out the door. And, and you don't. Chance, here's the Bert. funny thing: you don't even want to. You don't want to fire too many shots. If you fire too many shots, it's actually worse. Here's the even funnier thing: I don't even have to shoot at this guy. Do you see that? Yes, I did. All right. So you shot him way above him, and you still got him. How? And why is that? Why'd you get him with the shots and not hitting him? Because that that chance for the ricochet to spread thing mm -hmm. means they will go find him. Oh, okay. 
All right. Like, I mean, here we'll go over here with these ratchets. <laughs> I'll sh- I mean, it's oh, no. it's it's a crazy. little stu- it's a little stupid, right? Like, but um, yeah, come in here. All right, I'm gonna grab this ratch and pick him up, and I'm just gonna straight up shoot straight up into the air. I'm not even shooting at the guy. Right. Because when you do, they don't last very long. Okay, that, that's actually kind of humorous. I like that. Just not even shooting at him. <laughs> so you can be, you know, a couple a couple shots of, you know, good alcohol and, you know, all sorts of stuff into the next next time we game and just run this one. You have to hit your targets. Yeah, you don't have to hit anything. You just do... Potato aim to the rescue right here. Yeah, so if you really want, like, cheesy, easy button shooting, at least from an accuracy standpoint, this is your build. And if you look at how much incoming healing I have, it's just a matter of not getting hit by those, you know, the root leaves a bunch of extra projectiles that'll hunt you if you overfire. That's really what basically happens with it. So if oh, okay. you if you fire too long and there's nothing left for it to kill, it'll come after you. That's its, you know, sort of mechanic. Super Carbrush did not like that. I ran out of ammo. Oh, come on, you were just toying with him there. I was. You were were just toying with him. Make him think you had a chance. I'm just trying to bother him. Um, Tickle, 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 tripper comrade. (laughs) Tickle, tickle. So, yeah, that's that's the build. Um, But, yeah, if you had a corrosive, um, what is it, a mind melter or flesh melter? Yeah, flesh melter auto idle or flesh melter victory rush. You could do it with corrosive as well. Wow. Okay, so a lot of a lot of variants of this particular build that you could play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, kind of like what we were doing with Moe's the other night, right? And where I was just kind of mm-hmm. messing with all the different elements I could possibly do with Moe's. You can do the exact same thing with this because um, it's really just about what elements you're using. All right, Beans. Bye, Beans. Bye, bye, Beans. Oh, you should bet you guys over there, too. We oh, dropped Legendary for me to see what Legendary is. What's your gun? 5150. Is it a 2X? I don't think it was. I think it was just a 1X. I left it there. Yeah, it's just a 1X. And and again, as we always do when you're running this, this mobbing and stuff like that, when you're showing off your builds, it's scaled for two. But I'm not shooting anything. I think I, I let one shot off a uh, trooper carbrach because I have to because that's just my thing. But all the mobbing and clearing that you're that's happening right now that you're watching is just with your build. It's not with me shooting anything or helping out. It's all Bert. Right. So, so that, that is that is the build. I I I mean obviously I prefer the radiation, but I just wanted to show you that you know the beautiful thing is like you can literally do whatever you know as right. as long as there is a a damage increasing the flesh melter the atom bomb and the icebreaker all increase the damage of whatever element there is not one for shock or one for incendiary so you know you're really limited to the three but any of those three will make this super strong. If you And you're not dependent on the comp. You could run a driver with this, and it'd probably be even more strong from a damage perspective. And then I would definitely want to run a victory rush instead of an auto idle, because then I'd get the movement speed out of it. I just am, I have great driver comms. I just, I don't, I'm not in love with the play style. So, phase zerker it is for me, but... You could be, I don't, I, you could probably run with any com, actually. You could probably run it with a Nimbus or whatever. So, that's that, Negan. That's nice. the whole thing. Good, good. It's, it's fun yeah. to take the, 
other people's builds and kind of and kind of tweak them. And again, you you gave the shout out to Z Karma, so it's not like you, you know, stole a build. Yeah, I'm not stealing his build. A bit. No, no, it's you, a good you idea. It a little bit, which is which is a good idea, which is fun. I think that's kind of the fun stuff. And and as we talked about at the beginning, that when the 65 level increases, it'll be interesting to see what builds like this and how they improve on them and change them around and stuff like that. Yeah, it'll be fun. And I'm just I'm just fun. putting the um the skill trees up right now, and I'll leave them up on each one of them for a second in case you're looking for the skill trees. And there they are. Nice. And again, the key here is I mean the only thing that's key here is a complex route with splash damage. Complex route with splash damage. I am running a recursion with next two mags. I am running a consecutive hits. Soul render, and I am running a splash damage flipper, but I'm not really using them. I do have it on shock as my action skill augment, and I am adding to that corrosive. If you go the red suit route and you want to not kill you, like if you really want to be invincible to radiation, you would want to eliminate the corrosive damage on the grenade because you don't want to add, you want to add as few extra elements to your action skill as possible if you're going to use the red suit because basically you would want to leave it on shock and get rid of that corrosive. I would put an on grenade throw grenade on instead because any extra elements you add, when you do dot yourself, you'll dot yourself with all those elements. So if, if you dot yourself with the radiation and you have corrosive and shock in your ASE, and if you're running an N2M gun or something and you still have that active, you're going to dot yourself with every element you have active. <laughs> so unlike my normal Amara builds where I'm trying to get all five active, I'm kind of trying to limit it, but I am pushing it a little bit by having corrosive because I know that we're going to go run the Guardian takedown after this. So I want corrosive shock and radiation for the Guardian takedown. So that's, that's what I'm doing. All right, cool. Well, good. Cool. Sounds like a sounds like a fun build. It definitely looked like a fun build, and it didn't it didn't PowerPoint, but it did frame rate a little bit. It did kind of go shaky. A little frame bit, mm -hmm. but no, not certainly not PowerPointing like it used to do. So that's kind of good. It's good for other people who want to shoot things too. Correct. Well, after you and your Mo's were bouncing me around all night last night, I'm not feeling too bad if I give you <laughs> drop frames every once in a while. Just saying. That's right. My my auto bear dropping nukes, shaking everything up. So how do you feel about your beer, Negan? I assume you've been done with it for 20 minutes already. <laughs> no, I, I did not chug it. Um, I, I am enjoying it. Probably uh, not as much as the Blood Orange. This is not as infused oh, really? with the Clement. It's, it's still really good. I mean, the Blood Orange, I think I gave an 8 or a 9. It was really, really good. Um, everything about it was good. This one, uh, it's not terribly infused, so it tastes more like a white ale than it does, but it has just a just like a hint of orange on it. So it's it's good. It's probably seven, maybe seven out okay. of ten. It's definitely something if if my wife happens to pick another one up at work or we see it out someplace else, I would definitely buy it. It's definitely good. So, um, but it's one of those bigger cans, so we don't have to commit to the six pack on this one. So, but it was good. And uh, good. And uh, you know, how about yours, Mister Ninety Five Seventy Two Percent Humidity? How was yours? <laughs> Wearing a coat in the basement. So Oberon, I, I actually think I like my Oberon plain and with a lemon in it more than I like it with infusion of mango uh, for much the same reason you just said. Like, do I taste it? Yeah, a little. <laughs> Not a lot. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's got a definite, like, slight mango taste to it, but putting a fresh lemon in regular Oberon gives it a strong you know, lemon with the coriander and I like that. And so it's missing a little bit. So I, I'm going to go the same and I'm going to say, you know, well, I would give Oberon a nine. I'm going to give this about a seven. Okay. Nice. All right. Still pretty good. I mean, still pretty good beers. So that's Oh, it's there. man. Oberon, like a, a lukewarm Oberon with nothing in it. It's okay. You know, I'd give that like a six. <laughs> so, um. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> right. It's, I mean, it's good beer, so I, I, I will say it's good. And the brewery, if you didn't notice, the brewery is that way, apparently, um, according to the sign that you're standing on. So, oh, we should go find that. Probably should go find that. Good, good, good. Awesome. Awesome night. All I right. Like I like your build. <laughs> Thanks, man.
So with that, I think um, I think we have run our course, and we will call it an evening. See ya.